All right, I'm gonna show you guys how to do or how to line up the timing marks on a timing belt for a 2UZ, um, or at least how I do it. Um, they're super easy. A lot of guys get really worried about them as long as you just follow a few simple steps. It's really kind of hard to screw up as long as you do it properly. Um, so I got the timing belt and all that stuff off. Um, going on with the new belt. Um, I'm using an ASIM belt, which comes with a Mitsubishi belt, which is the same as OEM. Um, comes with timing marks for the crankshaft pulley. Comes with timing marks for the left cam. And comes with timing marks from the right cam. Um, one thing about the belt, on those timing marks, each timing mark area has an arrow. The arrow always points away from the engine. It always points forward. Um, most timing belts, if they don't have an arrow, a lot of them will have triangles. And those triangles, the tip, the point of the triangle, always faces away from the engine, never having it pointed at the engine, away. Okay, so on the bottom, I went ahead and connected, let's see here. Ah, connected the timing marks or the timing belt. It's got the uh, crank mark. I don't know if you guys can see it too well there. But there is several marks here. One that says crank with the arrow. That crank mark with the arrow lines up with the dot. There's a dimple here. There's this threaded hole here, which is not the timing mark. The timing mark is this dimple right here, which is also usually a painted surface. There's two dashes here though, that line up with that timing mark or that line up with the threaded hole. And then there's two more dashes up top here that line up with the pin. That's for the crankshaft pin. That's where those two dots line up. So there's three different indicators on the crankshaft pulley of where you to get the alignment right. So super easy to follow those, not too difficult. So now you get that one on first. Next, we will be putting on the camshaft ones. And I always start on the driver's side camshaft. This one has the, the ridge on it right there. Um, so we put that one on first and usually start on this side because this side does not have the tensioner. This side has the idler pulley. This side is always taut. And when you're putting on timing belts, the last side that you wanna put on is the side with the tensioner. So the tensioner is right here. So this is the last side that you want. So you're gonna start with this side and go from here up and then go on the driver's side camshaft and down to the water pump um, and then over to the passenger side camshaft. So let's see if we can do that. Um, I like to use a 17 millimeter box end wrench to hold the camshaft. I do not like using ratchets here because sometimes you wanna hold the, the camshaft or move it uh, forward or back to get the timing marks to line up properly. Now, if the ratcheting mechanism is in the on direction and the camshaft wants to turn in the off direction, it's the, the ratchet won't stop it. It will just go and then it'll go 12 teeth off or 20 teeth off or whatever. And then you gotta put it back and then it'll just be fighting the ratchet back and forth. So use a box in wrench, something that's fixed. So take the belt, come up over here. And now I got it put on. And as you can see, my uh, timing marks don't line up. I'm a tooth off. So what I do now is take the wrench. I'm going to turn the cam gear towards the timing mark over one tooth. Hang on, just gotta get it over. Perfect, got it to go one tooth over. And then put tension back onto the belt. So then I push the cam gear back in the direction that applies tension onto the timing belt. So that way the, the, the timing belt doesn't wanna come off. So now I have the timing marks on. So that cam gear's lined up. Now I'm gonna do the other side. So now I go down below the water pump and then I come up over on this cam gear and I have my timing belt tensioner, um, the actual tensioner out, but the tensioner pulley's in. I, I want the tensioner out so the tensioner pulley can be in its fully depressed position, giving me the correct amount of slack on the belt so I can just easily slide it over. 
So we're gonna slide this cam gear on. I got a little bit too much tension here. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna rotate the cam gear back a smidgen. There we go. Now the teeth line up perfectly. Push the belt on, push the belt onto the tensioner. Make sure that the belt is tensioned backwards. Okay. <sighs> And then, let's take a look. Timing marks dead on. Cam dot right there, square right there. All right, so now we're going to do one of the most crucial steps, and that's confirming our timing marks. Timing mark on the crank, there's one little dot on the, the engine block and the crank pulley. There's the timing belt marks that line up. Cam gear to belt to cylinder head cam gear to belt to cylinder head those all match so next step is we want to rotate the engine or the crankshaft 720 degrees two full revolutions which equals one revolution of the camshaft so first off we locate our cam or crankshaft sprocket oh, there it is. here's the uh, crankshaft sensor exciter ring and it also is used to pull the crankshaft or it holds the um, timing belt onto the camshaft or the crankshaft. So we will put that on. Oh, and then we'll put on our tensioner. So I bought a, uh, in the, the ASIN T, TKT-021 kit. Comes with a new tensioner with the pin in it. If you don't get one that comes with a tensioner in it, you need to collapse this. Um, usually use a vise and then put a new pin into it to hold it because you want it in the collapsed position when you install. Uh, don't, I, I don't recommend trying to install one of these things in an uncollapsed position. You will just fight the living crap out of that and possibly strip out some threads and life will just kind of suck in general. So I don't recommend doing that. So I'm just putting the two bolts in in the tensioner. Oh. One in. Second one in. Let's finish it off with the wrench. If I can. There we go. I should have grabbed my ratcheting wrench for this. Would have would have gone a little bit faster, but we're getting it. We're we're gonna make it happen. Okay, so there's one bolt. Tighten that guy down. Okay, this one I should be able to. Oh, it doesn't really want to turn by finger, so I'll do it by the wrench. Come on. Need my fingers a little bit stronger. Both nuts are tight and the pin is still in. So we leave that pin in. We got the crankshaft timing gear sprocket on. Now we're putting on the lower timing cover. What's important about the lowering timing cover is that it has the degrees of timing on it. So does our harmonic balancer. So that's why I'm putting this on is because I wanna be able to turn the engine over but I need the crankshaft pulley to be on. You could do this by turning it with the camshafts on a non-VVTI engine that's doable, you gotta put a lot of force onto it, I don't really recommend it. On a VVTI engine, you absolutely do not do that because the nut or the bolt that goes through the VVTI cam gear is only torqued to about 12 foot-pounds and it takes, oh, I don't know, 100 foot-pounds of torque to, no, maybe not that much, 60, we'll say 40 to 60 foot-pounds of torque to turn the engine over by the camshaft by hand. So you'll, you'll just snap that bolt. So don't, don't do that. That's a bad idea. <clears throat> okay, so now I'm just putting in 
the four bolts. Okay, so there's one, two. Get that one in. If it wants to go in, doesn't really want to go in, does it? No, it doesn't. Let's see here. Come on. There we go. Okay. I'll put in the bottom one. Okay, there's that one. One more. And I'm putting them all, I'm just getting them all started. I'm a plastic covers and stuff like that. Valve covers, all those things. Um, when I'm tightening them down, I put in all the bolts, finger tight, just get them all threaded before I start tightening anything down. That ensures that the cover is lined up properly. What's well, a real pain in the butt is if you put in one bolt, you tighten it down and you go to put in your other bolt and it doesn't line up and you got to unbolt the other ones or whatever so sometimes that happens sometimes it doesn't but I like them all to be uniformly tightened as you put things together so now I'm just going back in and tightening everything up turning back up these are all torqued to 89 inch pounds on these plastic covers um didn't know if you knew that my little quarter inch ratchet here had a torque wrench in it let's see click there it is you heard it right good <clears throat> torque spec now we take our harmonic balancer it's got a keyway on it so now we slide that on <clears throat> okay let's find our timing marks Time marks are there oh. She's getting a little tight. Oh, there we go. Okay, slider on. Take our crank pulley bolt, thread that in. Now I'm not going to torque this yet. I'm not going to fully tighten this bolt. I just need it in to rotate it. Now, if I were to rotate the engine and find out that my timing marks were slightly off, I gotta pull this crankshaft pulley back off. So I don't torque it just yet. All I need it to do is rotate the engine. Okay. Lower timing cover on. Now I got my 22 millimeter or 7 8 socket, which goes on the front crankshaft pulley. Uh, three foot breaker bar ratcheting usually helps. If it's flex head, helps even more. Okay, so we're gonna rotate the engine. Going to watch the timing marks. So we're coming up on one full revolution of the crankshaft. Okay, there's one full revolution. So one revolution of the crankshaft will only equal a half turn of the camshaft. So if you look, I don't know if I can point it right. Where's it at? Okay, so there's timing marks lined up with zero degrees on the crankshaft from one revolution. Now our timing mark on the camshaft sprockets is now at the bottom. Our timing mark on the engine block is at the top, so we're not quite there yet. So we got to go one more revolution of the kit of the crankshaft. Now, while we're doing this, the timing marks that were on the belt, they will not line back up with the original timing marks after I do this. Um, I think I calculated out the math one time. Um, to get the timing belt to go back to the same position on the timing works in the engine block, I think it's 64 full rotations of the crankshaft. Now I'm not gonna sit out here and turn the crankshaft 64 times for those little paint marks to match up. I generally don't care about the paint marks on the belt. They're just kind of there to help. The true timing marks are what's on the engine block, the cam gears, and the crankshaft pulleys. Those are the marks. If you get those on, you're good. So once you start rotating the engine, who cares about the timing marks on the belt? They don't matter anymore. 
So I rotated around, did two full revolutions on the crankshaft. We're set at zero degrees TDC there. Okay, now we're gonna go over to this side. We are 100% spot on there. And then we are 100% spot on over here. So, timing marks are verified. Now we know that no matter how many times you turn this engine, those timing marks are gonna come back to the same spot. So we just verified timing, um, timing orientation. This is something that I do every time I do a timing belt because just in case you didn't have things tightened right or whatever, um, this is what I always do. And so after you verify timing, you do the final step and you come down with the tensioner pulley and pull the pin. Pulling the pin is only something you do after you verify timing. Also, don't forget to pull the pin because you'll get a lot of chatter and it's gonna make a lot of noise. The belt's gonna be jumping around a ton. So yeah, there's that. Good luck. <laughs>